Hi, this is Russell Sunnar from teachertrainingvideos.com. Sorry I'm not in my lovely studio today with my sound equipment and my green screen, but I'm out traveling in Poland at the moment, so I'm making this video from Poland. Today we're going to focus on forums. That is when we get students to share their ideas on a particular question that we've set. You use them a lot in tools like Moodle, Blackboard, Canva, etc. Now the secret to forums is to make sure that you do something with the students' answers. And what most teachers do is reply to every single forum individually and that really is a mistake because it can take a lot of time. In some of my groups at university I have as many as 70 students. There's no way I've got time to reply to every forum. So I'm going to show you some lovely techniques that I've used. I'll show you some real examples that can save you time but can be really effective how we can use forums. Hope you like the video and as always if you do please like it, please share it with other teachers and of course please comment on it. Let's get going. So here we've got an, an example of a forum where students have basically introduced themselves to the group and you can see there are loads and loads of obviously answers on the screen, people introducing themselves and it's really difficult for me then to go back and reply to each individual student but what I can do is read the forum and then maybe summarize 10 important points and one of the ways to do that is to use a technology called Vokaroo which is really simple to use and you can leave the summary at the end of the forum or add a link after the forum with the summary. Let me show you the technology, it's so easy to use. So the technology that we're going to use is called Vokaroo and I'm just going to click on it and I'm going to just, I can click on this button here and literally record myself speaking and then save that. I can then either share the link or embed the recording or even download it as an MP3 file and just upload it. It's so easy to use. So let's imagine that my students have been discussing a certain point. Perhaps let's say they've been talking about the flipped classroom and I just want to make the, te the best 10 points. Hi guys, thank you for the forum and I just want to summarise some of the points you've been making. I think the first point that a lot of you are making is that the flipped classroom requires knowledge of making video content and I totally agree with that because essentially a lot of the content for the flipped classroom tends to be around video. Secondly, some of you made the point how important it is to be able to make use of YouTube so that you can search effectively for content and how important it is to learn to search effectively on YouTube and I thought that was a really good point. Blah, 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 blah. I do the recording summary of all their points. I can play it back. Hi guys, thank you for the forum and I just want to summarise some of the points you've been making. So easy to make a recording, now I can click on save and share and I've got various options. I could share this link, so I could share that link directly into Vokaroo for example, sorry, directly into Moodle or directly into a blog or even email it to them. But the most obvious thing would be to do was save that link when, and then add the link at the end of the forum or in a link underneath the forum so that the students can listen to the summary. Another thing that you can do is simply download this file. So I can click here and it actually downloads an MP3 file and then you can share that with your students. Okay, again, you could upload it into uh, perhaps Moodle or Edmodel. Very, very simple. Okay, so if I was to click here now and click on open, I can actually play that file back so it really makes it flexible to use. One of the techniques that I often use is simply to copy the link and then all I do is underneath where I've created the link to the forum, I create an additional link and I write this is the summary so that students can read the forum and then click on the link underneath and actually listen to my summary. And that is a technique that I use very often. It means the students have got a summary of the key points, which is great because you're kind of basically summarizing and bringing together, condensing the most important points. Secondly, it demonstrates that you've made use of the forum. So you're sending a message to the students to say, I'm going to use the forum. I'm going to be working with it. That's really, really important. And the thirdly, of course, it's really easy for them to access because it's immediately underneath the forum itself.
Now this is a technique that I often use, particularly at the beginning when I'm asking the students to introduce themselves in a forum. I then create a Google Doc and I ask the students to write their names on the left hand side in the Google Doc and then to choose three things that they've got in common with three different people and that to do that of course they need to read through the forum and choose three things that they've got in common with three people. Again this saves me having to do the work it also means it forces the students to read the forum and it also forces the students to find out what they've got in common with other students. So the emphasis again here is on getting the students to work with the forum and not necessarily the teacher to be working with the forum forum all the time. So I think this is my favourite technique and I've even sometimes got the students to do this. So I sometimes set as an, an activity for the students to read through a forum and then summarise it themselves by making a video. So what I've done is I've read a forum where I'm discussing with a group of teachers the problems or the challenges with teaching online and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to record myself these are the key points that they were making I'm going to record myself and I'll use a free technology called Screencast-O-Matic I'm going to click on launch free recorder and it will actually re open up a recorder where I can record myself talking over that PowerPoint slide of course it could be a word file where I'm going to record myself talking over the key points that the students have made so you can see now the recorders open and all I'm going to do is minimize the website uh, and you'll see that the recorder then comes onto the screen I'm just going to move the recorder so it's the right size OK, and then I can simply access it. Now, if you need to, if the recorder disappears, then all you need to do is click on here. OK, this is the recorder in the bottom and your tray, the recorders here. Once you've got the recorder open, OK, so just come back to the recorder now. And I'm not, I can even put myself on the webcam. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to do it simply like this. I'm going to record myself summarizing the key points that the students made. So I'm going to click on this button here. I can see the microphone's working OK. OK, just want to go through the key points from today's uh, forum. Uh, first of all, a lot of you were making the point that we lose key information when our students, uh, when we teach online, because we can't see our students, we can't see how they're reacting, we can't see how they're working in groups, we can't see their faces. And so it's very true that we do lose a lot of information. So it was a really good point. Um, you're right to say as well, point two, that we need to provide a lot more guidance. And it was a lot of you said that in the forum. That was really good to hear. Um, because when we're teaching online, students don't have so much support. They're maybe unclear about what they need to do or how to do the next activity, etc. So we do provide a, a lot more. We need to provide a lot more guidance when we're teaching students online, etc., etc. I just make the recording. Once I finish, just click on the stop button or it's the pause button, then click on done. Now that recording is actually ready instantly. And I can play that recording back now and listen to it. So I'm just going to play this and just listen to it a bit. OK, just want to go through the key points from today's uh, forum. Uh, first of all, a lot of you were making the point that we lose. So absolutely brilliant. I've done the recording and now I've got a few choices. And what I can do with that is just simply save it onto my computer, save it as an MP4 file. I can give it a name here. So I'm going to call this feedback on forum. And then I'm going to save that onto uh, the desktop of my computer. And then I could upload that into Edmodel or upload it into Moodle. I could even send it perhaps as an email to the students or I could put it um, in if you're using a blog or something like that. Somewhere, of course, where the students will be able to listen to the recording. Now, you do have other options. Uh, you could s upload the video into YouTube and then share the link or upload it onto your Google Drive and then share the link. You first of all need to link your Google Drive or your YouTube account to this technology. This technology is completely free. It's called Screencast-O-Matic. And that means the students get a recording of a summary. Now, as I've said, I have even sometimes flipped this activity and got the students to use the technology to record their own summaries. And that can also be a really nice technique to think about. If we just jump onto the screen, here is the recording. I'm going to click it on it. This is the actual video. 
Okay, just want to go through the key points from today's. What a great way of summarizing what's been discussed in a forum. Now, another way to get the students to use a forum is for you not to do the summary, but get the students to do the summary. And I often do this if I'm teaching online. Now, the secret to this is to get the students to open up the forum. So they've obviously already written their answers into the forum. But what you now do in a Zoom session or in a Microsoft Teams session, you get the students to open up the forum, you then move them into breakout rooms. So let's say, for example, we've got four different breakout rooms and you ask one of the members of each breakout group to open the forum to screen share it. And then for the students to discuss the five best points that have been made in the forum. So this time the students are working with the forum. Each group is reading through the forum and choosing and discussing five interesting points. And then what I do when I bring them back into the main room is that I say to group one, OK, what five points have you taken from the forum? This is really powerful. I've used this technique a lot. I will point out a few things. It doesn't work very well if you've got a really big forum because that means then that the students in group one, group two, group three, and group four, they're looking at the forum and spending ages. But if you've got maybe 15 or 20 answers in a forum, then that can be a really effective technique. And I've even used this in class as well. So it does mean the students need to use computers in the classroom, but you put them into groups, they open up the forum, they work through the forum, and they decide on five points that they like or five you kind of just getting them to do some activity that forces them to read the forum and to summarize it. Okay, really hope that video was useful. Please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free videos on using different technologies when you're involved in teaching and learning. Loads here on the opening page. There's also some specific sections here at the top. If you want to follow my work, the best thing to do is to sign up to the newsletter. That way you get updated with all the latest videos, the blogs, the webinars and the online courses that I run. But you can also subscribe to my YouTube channel and follow me there. Uh, you'll get the latest videos. Uh, don't forget to click on the bell so that you get updated. And finally, if you do want to contact me about doing some training with your organization or your team, then please contact me. And you can do that from the website. And thank you very much.